Hi, Dave Jack here, Superintendent of Falker County Public Schools. I've got a video update for you today. It comes on the heels of last night's school board meeting and, of course, is prior to the opening of school tomorrow. Uh, so there's a, there's a few different categories I need to touch on. So this is going to be a little bit longer uh, update than usual. But first, I want to talk about the FCPS Virtual Academy. Uh, again, the FCPS Virtual Academy is different than uh, the remote learning option synchronous slash asynchronous learning option for students uh, with COVID concerns. The virtual academy was something that we developed as a result of determining or a learning that's, we had a lot of students who really th thrived in the virtual learning environment. So we decided to create a virtual academy for those students, for students who this is really their thing. They really learn best. And if you believe in that environment, if you believe that students all learn differently, then this just makes sense. Uh, it's a one-year commitment. Um, the, the, uh, there's all, already over 100 students enrolled, but the application window is going to be open for our next, another 24 hours starting now. So if you, if you're, you feel like your child fits that category, um, you can go to the Virtual Academy website, which is uh, located at bit.ly forward slash FCPS1 virtual. That's bit dot ly forward slash forward slash fcps1 virtual and complete the application or you can simply call mike snell at 422-7032 that's 422-7032 he can walk you through the application process and there's an interview component to this as well now if you're a student who's already in who's currently in the virtual academy classes start for you tomorrow if you are a student who enrolls um, beginning now and, and into tomorrow, your, uh, your school year will begin next Wednesday. The reason for this delay has to do with staffing, and it, was, ha, it, ha, it has to do with uh, staffing the virtual academy, um, and uh, we, are, we are most definitely experiencing a teacher shortage, as is, as is every school division in this state, and we're feeling it through the virtual academy also, but we're in a much better place now. So there, there's that option for you. Now, the Virtual Academy is different than the FCPS uh, remote learning option. The remote learning option is for those students who um, have COVID-related concerns or who are students in the high-risk category. So if you are one of those uh, students or your child is one of those students and, and as a result, you're looking for a remote option for your child, we have one for you. All you need to do is contact your child's school uh, let them know that you're interested in the remote learning option, not the virtual academy option. That's different. Um, but let them know uh, if you, your students are enrolled nine weeks at a time, you can renew after nine weeks. Or if you're more comfortable, your students are more comfortable, they can re return to school. Um, but that is that is more of the uh, synchronous slash asynchronous model. And um, if you contact your child's school, they can talk you through more of that let you know more about what what that program is all about resources will be available uh, in cases for quarantine and other short-term illnesses now this is this is really a third category this is the this there's another uh, resource for students who who have to be quarantined because they tested positive or because they were in close contact with someone who tested positive um, and a remote learning uh, resource will be provided for them also it will look, it will look a lot like the remote learning option I just described, uh, but that also will be coordinated through your child's school, but that option and that resource will be available. Um, there was also discussion last night at last night's school board meeting about mask masking guidelines. I'm just going to repeat what was shared last night. FCPS strongly recommends that students under 12 wear face masks in school and on buses. Also recommends that students 12 and up along with staff and visitors wear face masks in school and on buses. Third, recommends that staff and students wear face masks in FCPS buildings. Um, mask wearing remains the choice of parents and families. Um, we will be sending out additional information in order to be able to uh, you know, track the students whose parents are opting them out of mask wearing um, so that teachers are aware of who should and shouldn't be wearing masks, etc. It's more of a record keeping thing than anything else, but that will be forthcoming in the next week or two. Um, 
Now, this is something else that was discussed last night. I want to make sure you're aware of this. And this is a new caveat to the mask wearing uh, situation. It says masks may be mandated by for students, staff, and visitors by the direction of the division superintendent or designee if the rate of new positive cases of coronavirus is at or above 1% of the total student or staff population in a calendar week at a particular school, department, or across the school division. And 1% is above. A 1% and above is considered a high rate of new infections by the Virginia Department of Health. So that's the 1% piece. But then there's a 10% piece. Masks may, may be mandated if the number of absentees due to illness or quarantine is at or above 10%. So there's the testing positive piece, which is 1%. There's the uh, illness and quarantining, which is uh, at or above 10% of the total population of students or staff in a particular school department. 10% is more than double the standard absentee rate of 5% or less. So talking about two different things here, the 1% or higher um, for students testing positive, that could, that could mean a mandated mask requirement in schools or in an apartment. And if there is a 10% or, or above absentee rate due to illness or quarantining, Again, that could result in a uh, mask mandate for a short period of time. Mitigation strategies will still continue. All employees and students should complete a daily self-health assessment. All employees and students must stay home if they're sick. Frequent hand washing and or use of hand sanitizers is encouraged. Social distancing shall be maintained to the extent possible, particularly indoors. Contact, contact tracing will be used for any suspected cases of COVID-19. Any individual not wearing a mask who is determined to be close contact of a person infected with COVID will be instructed to quarantine. Plasma ionization system are installed in each schools and each of our school buildings to improve air quality. Um, next, building access guidelines. Our, our building access guidelines are basically the same as they were um, last spring. These will be posted uh, at each of our schools, at the entrances, uh, and again, they, they, they essentially mirror what uh, we've, we've already required or were requiring last spring, uh, but they, they, they do provide some updates, and this is also available on our website if you want to check it out. Um, last but not least, COVID dashboard. Beginning tomorrow, we'll, we will be updating the COVID dashboard. And uh, that is a way to notify parents, families of uh, any positive COVID cases in the school division. Again, we will start that up uh, beginning tomorrow. Most importantly, and I'm wrapping up here, we look forward to seeing over 11,000 students uh, back in our schools tomorrow. And we're going to have an amazing school year. And I, I, I just am thrilled that uh, we're at or above 11,000 right now. And that number typically continues to climb in the first week or so of school but that's fantastic new, fantastic news for our school division so hope everyone has a great school year uh, and uh, it, this has uh, been a difficult time obviously for everyone the last year and a half or so but we're looking forward to a much more normal school year moving forward so hope everyone uh, has a great rest of the week thank you